Hi, my name is Glenn Turndrup and I teach biology at Lakota's freshman school. What's interesting is that we've come to dominate the planet in terms of technology and in terms of our sheer numbers. And according to Darwin's definition of fitness, we're fit. I think if you look at quality of life, both mentally and physically, and you look at our society, we struggle with obesity, addiction, depression, anxiety, infighting. I think these are all indicators that even though we're increasing in number, the quality of our lives is not what it could be. To get my students thinking about solutions to these problems, a couple years ago I came up with a survival of the fittest science documentary assignment. So in this assignment my students find healthy practices and discover the science behind them and then they try to get people to do those practices, motivate their audience, and defend the credibility of the people that did the research so we can avoid fake news. This year I decided to do my own survival of the fittest video. So I'm going to, I'm going to introduce my students to some of these healthy living topics through my video. But the other thing that I want to do is I want to attempt to explore what I think is a common origin of many of these um, problems that we're seeing in society today. This video is rated T for teens. So expect the silly, expect the unexpected. The reason I'm starting out my video with what my father's DNA shows is to make the point that my hunter-gatherer ancestors made their way north to Scandinavia, but that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Just within the last couple years, scientists have discovered Homo sapien fossils that are 300,000 years old. For 300,000 years, our brains were being molded in a natural environment. So, I know when you look around, you say, that's not my home. I'm not comfortable out there. Yeah, you may not like going tent camping or hiking in a snowstorm, but a lot of the things that make you healthy are connected to your past. If you look at a lot of healthy practices, they were probably requirements when we were hunter-gatherers. So that's why they're healthy practices. Our brains are meant for a certain type of lifestyle, and that is reflected in these healthy practices. So in this video, I'll just introduce you to some of these healthy living practices, which will be nothing new. And then I'd like you to find the science that these practices really make us healthier mentally and in terms of our physical longevity and try to motivate your audience to do them why do these practices make us fit for survival so one thing I also learned uh, when my brother had his DNA tested is that I share a deep common ancestor with one of the most successful investors in the world, Warren Buffett, is in my Haplo group. So Warren, if you happen to see this video, uh, my school district is undergoing some initiatives to try to revolutionize education and make it better. So how about a little investment in Lakota local schools? That would be awesome. Dream big. Hmm. I wonder what it was like to be a hunter-gatherer as a turnaround. Ned, you must go out and get firewood. Oh, come on, Dad. Check out all these pine cones I got. Good. We need logs. We need wood for tonight. You will go out and gather wood. 
Come on, Dad, I never get to play with my friends. So here's how I start every morning. Hey, guys. Wow, look. You look glad to see me. Are you glad to see me? All right. So what the science shows, and I learned this from my students several years ago, that pets actually improve your health, mental and physical. So bring a little nature into your home, or you can go out in nature. Do you guys like to go to the woods? You do? Yeah. Identify yourself. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm a human, a homo sapien from the future. I came through a wormhole. You're too big to go through a wormhole. Well, it's something that physicists discovered. You Why are you here? Well, uh, we're having some trouble, us homo sapiens living in harmony with nature, so we've come to learn from the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. We have many habits that uh, we could use. Oh, so you come in peace? Yeah, yeah, we come in peace. Uh, why are you, why are you hard like a rock? Well, yeah, single-use plastics that got into our food chain and, well, they don't break down. We started to eat them and eventually we turned to plastic. Oh, not so good. And you call yourselves homo sapiens, wise ones. Very odd. Yeah, well, hindsight's twenty twenty. So, getting back to things, uh, we need help. Like, not only are we made of plastic now, we're also addicted to sugar, which um, supposedly is addicted to, addictive as cocaine. Oh, we not find berries and fruits so addictive. You should try berries and fruits. Anyway, we got a lot to learn, so let's get busy. Show me some of your uh, habits, your lifestyle. Because we need to get back to nature. That's, that's the context in which we were really healthy. But we were forced to do certain things, and now we don't have to do, and so we're kind of in trouble. Oh, yes. We would definitely need help. I would... So, how was everybody's day today? Well, I've been fanning this fire all day long. I'm worn out. You think you're worn out? I've been carrying a baby on my back all day. Oh, yeah. I collected all these pine cones. Well, I almost clubbed somebody from another clan. I've been hunting all day. Well, I'll stop complaining. It's all part of being a hunter-gatherer. So as hunter-gatherers, our mind was continually immersed in our environment for the sake of survival. Looking for food, trying to avoid being food, and so our brain developed under conditions in which we were immersed in our senses. And there's actually been research that's been done. Um, there's a researcher that linked people up with their iPhones, and he would randomly text them and ask them how happy they were and, and ask them what they were doing. And what he found out was that if uh, they were immersed in their surroundings, even if what they were doing wasn't very thrilling, like driving somewhere, if they were simply mindful of their surroundings, they were a lot happier. You're, uh, you're happier taking in your environment than being lost in thought. You guys having a good time checking out the environment, looking for rabbits to terrorize? Hey Frank, what are you doing? Um, well, I took up yoga while you were gone in that wormhole. Well, I was going to report to you uh, what I learned from the hunter-gatherers. Yeah, go ahead, I'm listening. The hunter-gatherers are engaged in their environment, so their mind doesn't have time to wander. Yeah, that's what yoga does. You have to be engaged with these postures, or you'll... Oh! Fall over! Bad idea, Frank. 
I've never craved anything from the vegetable aisle, ever, even though it's good for me. So, why do we crave foods that aren't good for us? Well, in prehistoric times, sugary foods and fatty foods, which are, produce a lot of calories and energy, release dopamine and opioids in our brain, which led to our survival because we need calories to stay alive. Today, the environment's changed. We don't need calories like we did then because food is much more abundant. So, it's an example of a deceptive brain message. I don't need this donut. So, back in the day when we were hunter-gatherers, you had to walk a long ways to get your high caloric foods. So if you wanted a donut, you'd have to walk and find donuts on a donut tree. All kidding aside, John Medina in his book Brain Rules says that our ancestors probably had to walk as far as 12 kilometers a day to get the food that they needed as hunter-gatherers. So our brains were uh, molded and shaped or hardwired in circumstances in which the body had to be moving. And so exercise is a big component to brain health. OMG, Frank. Take a break from the yoga. What is that, Frank? Half moon. My newest pose. Wow, you're getting pretty good. So what'd you learn? Well, Frank, I learned that we need exercise. The brain evolved in a body that's constantly on the move. Exercise, super important. Yep, that's why I do yoga. But I can see, I don't think you need any lectures on exercise. So how was everybody's day? Well, Chief, I nearly got eaten by a bear. Good thing my flight or fight kicked in. I ran for my life. Have you ever had anything scare you really bad and your heart raced and you feel that adrenaline rushing through you in microseconds? Amazing quick response. And we know why we have that response. We had to have it to stay alive in the wilderness. But the problem is the flight, fight, or freeze response, scientists believe, is now being activated by all the stimuli that we have around us. And so instead of operating when it just needs to, like it did back in the day of hunter-gatherers, now it operates uh, much more often and it takes a toll on the human body. So what we need to do is we need to check out. We need to uh, unwind our minds. Hey Frank, back from the wormhole. What moves that? Oh, this is down dog. Down dog. What'd you learn this time? Well, Frank, the hunter gatherers had the flight or fight response too, but you know, as soon as it's over, since they're immersed in nature, they're calm again. So we need some sort of way to to calm our minds, Frank. Yeah, you should really try yoga. In yoga, you use diaphragmatic breathing, which has been scientifically proven to calm you down. It engages your parasympathetic system. Wow, Frank, you're talking some serious science there. But yeah, I'll try a deep breathing to 
calm my nervous system. Chief, I want you to meet my friend, Homo sapien. He came through a wormhole, which I still don't understand, from the future to learn from us, our hunter-gatherer ways. I want you to accept him into the tribe. His name is Homo sapien. Oh, but he looks rather strange. He's hard like a rock. Yes, he's eaten in too much plastic. It's so nice to meet you. It's great to come from the future and learn so much about your healthy practices. Seems like you guys are always together. We depend on one another. We could not survive without one another. And if somebody threatens us, like Clan Raven, Clan Raven is always invading our territory, trying to take the food of Clan Bengal. We are Clan Bengal. We stand up for one another. We need each other for protection and food. Wow, you guys really are close. See, in today's society, um, people kind of go into their homes and you don't even see them. They're, they're kind of independent. They don't. That probably is a reason why we're not as healthy. Um, we're not as dependent. We don't interact as much and, as we did back in the hunter-gatherer days. I tell you what, let's celebrate our new friend. We will eat saber tooth tiger steaks and draw cave paintings of our strange new friend. Oh. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, I, I guess I'm okay with being called strange new friend. I kind of like Homo sapien, the wise one. Hmm. I'm having trouble sleeping. No cell phone. No TV. I usually go to sleep by them. Exhausted. I wonder what my hunter gather friends are doing. Get my flashlight out. Anybody up? It's me, Homo sapien. Oh. Sleep already? The sun just went down. It's kind of creepy. Oh! How do you carry the sun in your hands? I'm so sorry. I, I will leave. I can just find my way back. It's probably not very... Oh my gosh! <coughs> Wormhole, where are you? Substitute teacher. What's your name? Glad your teacher warned me about you. Believe it or not, I'm your future self. Yep, you didn't become a forest ranger. You became a teacher. The reason I came from the future is because it wasn't until I was 47 years old that I began to understand how my mind works. And uh, once I understood how it works, Try to, to try to change my mind, I discovered yoga. And that's why I've come. Yoga is really helpful to change your mind. What? I didn't become a forest ranger? My gosh, and yoga? Don't tell me I gave up my skateboard. Yoga. That's crazy, man. That's pretty far out, though, that you came from the future. Future self, how's this? Is this crow? Not bad, Glenn. You know, you might make a yoga teacher one day. Hey, Sammy. How you doing? Not so good? What's wrong? 
Mm. Got problems with balance, fatigue, anxiety, stress, mood disorder. You got problems with sleep, chronic pain. You got cholesterol problems, and you're only 17. Quality of your life isn't good, and you don't like school. Sammy, this is not good, man. Well. Hey, uh, we had a sub today at school. You'll never guess who it was. It was, it was my future self. So, what he told me was that in 2010, the University of Maryland did a review of, of 80 different experiments. These guys were health specialists, and they said that yoga equals or surpasses exercise in treating every single one of those things you mentioned. So, I haven't done yoga. Oh, I did a little bit of yoga today. Yeah, I tried this. What was it? The crow pose. Yeah, I did the crow pose. So, hey, uh, that's what he told me. He's my future self. That's the only reason I listen to him. And uh, he's pretty convincing. But try it. Yoga addresses every one of those things. Namaste. Hey, try it. See what happens. Talk to you later. In 2010, health specialists from the University of Maryland examined more than 80 studies comparing yoga to regular exercise. They found that yoga equaled or surpassed exercise in things such as improving balance, reducing fatigue, decreasing anxiety, cutting stress, lifting moods, improving sleep, reducing pain, lowering cholesterol, and more generally in raising the quality of life for yogis, both socially and on the job. Um, another thing that I came across during my research of yoga, the science of yoga, was an interesting uh, book called The Body Keeps the Scores. It was written by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, who is a trauma expert, he is a doctor, and uh, he actually took uh, several women who had severe PTSD, and he had them go through yoga, this is the graph part of my presentation, like you'll be presenting a graph as well. Um, one of the best indicators of our autonomic health, our ability to respond to stress, is heart rate variability. And Dr. Vanderkoek shows normal heart rate variability, and then heart rate variability in people with PTSD, like these women, um, it's much different. So he says, breathing is rapid and shallow, heart rate is slow and out of sync with the breath. Typical pattern of a shutdown person with chronic PTSD. So they took these women with PTSD, they had them do yoga, and um, after coming out of the program, their heart rate variability improved. So this was a National Institute of Health study. It was funded by the NIH um, by Dr. Van der Kolk. So again, this is research that shows that uh, yoga impacts mental health. Hey Frank, back from the wormhole. Well Frank, you know I've been thinking about the hunter-gatherer lifestyle in yoga and you know it just seems like yoga from what you've been telling me helps us to steer the mind and today well we don't have the constraints of nature anymore on our minds, so we've got to steer our minds ourselves, and yoga does it. Yep. So why don't you stop talking and start doing it? Okay, Frank. Man, that moo looks really painful. What the heck are you doing? Hey, Frank, look at me. What the heck are you doing? It's no handstand. You gotta put your hands down. You're gonna break your neck. Go to a yoga studio and learn how to do it right.
So why is yoga so beneficial? The reason we need yoga is to steer our minds. Why are our minds so hard to steer? Because our minds were formed over thousands of years in a hunter-gatherer context that put constraints on our minds. In other words, our minds had to struggle, but in ways that were actually healthy. The hunter-gatherer context exercised our minds in really healthy ways. Today, we don't have those constraints put on us by nature. So today, we have to constrain ourselves. We have to put disciplines in place to learn to steer the mind. So how does yoga do that? Well, first of all, the deep breathing diaphragmatic breaths of yoga are shown by science to calm the mind, particularly the exhale engages the parasympathetic system. So that calms the mind. If you're calmer, your thoughts, it's easier for your thoughts to settle. The second component of yoga that helps us to steer the mind are the asanas. That is the Sanskrit for the postures. When you get into a posture, you have to focus on the posture, getting into the posture, holding the posture. So that point of focus is actually um, helps you to meditate or practice mindfulness, which science has also shown can be really healthy. So yoga provides the breath to calm the mind and the asanas to help provide a focus point for the mind. And the breath is a focus point too. On the mat, we learn to focus our minds and then we can take that skill off the mat and when circumstances come our way that are trying to take our brain one way or another, we're more likely to be able to watch our minds because we've learned to steer our minds on the mat, we can watch our minds and determine the direction that our minds want to go. Whoa! Keep popping out of that wormhole. You disturbed my meditation. Sorry, Frank. Actually, hmm. That's interesting because what I learned about the hunter-gatherers their minds were constantly preoccupied with, with the everyday business of survival. Now we have a lot, of, a lot of free time on our hands and our minds tend to wander, so we need to steer them with something. Yeah, Frank, it's called meditation. Now, could you uh, give me a little bit of space so I can get, can get back into my meditation? Hmm. Sorry, Frank, I'll, I'll go back into my wormhole. So when you do your science documentary, just keep in mind your documentary is only as good as your sources. Because you're not an expert in these topics you're investigating, you have to go to the experts. So let me give you an idea of the individuals that I chose. So at this point I'm going to defend the credibility of the sources that I chose. So the first source that I chose was the article, The Health Benefits of Yoga and Exercise, a Review of Comparison studies. So this was done by uh, Dr. Allison Ross in 2010. She was an associate professor at the University of Maryland and she did what um, she did what's called a comparison study. So this is sort of the gold standard in science and basically she reviewed 80 studies, 80 experiments that compared yoga to regular exercise. So it's a really broad view. It's the big picture of what's going on. And because, because she reviewed so many experiments, all of that data causes her paper to have greater weight. To it. As far as her credibility, um, she got her bachelor's in science at Vanderbilt in, in nursing. In 89, she got a master of science in uh, mental health um, as a mental health clinical specialist. And then in 2002, she got her PhD in nursing. So she did this study when she was an associate professor at the University of Maryland. And then she went on after her PhD to work at the National Institute of Health. So this is a lady with significant credibility. The other article that I uh, referenced in my video 
was this one, yoga is an adjunctive treatment of the post-traumatic stress disorder, a randomized controlled trial. So in this case, Dr. Bessel van der Kool took, I believe, 64 women with PTSD and he randomly put them in two groups, a control group that got health education and another group that got yoga therapy. So after the time interval of the experiment, um, they found that 52% of the women who previously had the untreatable PTSD were better. The control group was 21%. So they found that yoga was significantly better than regular health education. And as I showed in the graph um, of heart rate variability, apparently yoga is able to improve heart rate variability in women that formerly had PTSD. So heart rate variability is a sign that you're respond, responding correctly to stress, which people that have PTSD do not do. The whole point is that you're only as good as your sources. So um, make sure that, make sure the credibility, the education of the people that um, you're basing your documentary on. This way you can avoid fake news. As I was getting certified in yoga, um, I decided to buy this book, The Science of Yoga, because I really wanted to kind of tease out what's kind of yoga myth and what has been proven by science. And it's a really great case study in fake news because, for example, in his book, The Science of Yoga, uh, William Broad makes the point that in 2001, the University of California, Davis, did a study of yoga and uh, they concluded that yoga does improve aerobic fitness, which sort of contradicted earlier studies. Like in 1989, um, researchers at Duke did a controlled study where they compared aerobic conditioning in bikers with um, people doing yoga. And they concluded that yoga had a lot of benefits, but it did not improve what we call VO2 max, the ability of the heart and lungs to process oxygen because it's not, it doesn't raise your heart rate enough. Tip. This 2001 study done um, by the University of California Davis concluded that yes, yoga does improve cardiovascular fitness, but if you look at the research, um, the experiment was done on 10 people, 10 men, and it only improved their uh, VO2 max 7%. Also, the person that did the experiment was also the editor of the journal that published the experiment. So what William Broad did is he looked at multiple uh, research studies, and that's what I want you to do in your video. Don't just um, go on the basis of the conclusion of one experiment. You need to compare multiple experiments from different sources. So in the science of yoga, William Broad um, looks at this comprehensive study from the University of Maryland, um, Duke, and also a study that was done in Columbia where they actually put yogis in a metabolic chamber where they sealed them in, they had them do Ashtanga yoga, which is pretty vigorous. And they found that, it, um, that yoga does, again, does not lead to cardiovascular fitness. The point is, you want to make sure that you have good sources, and you want to say you want to make sure that multiple sources are saying the same thing, because when the University of California Davis came out with their study, um, a lot of the yogis jumped on those results, and you you can see uh, the claims quoted in a lot of yoga magazines. But if you look at the more broad research, you see that um, really what they were what they're promoting was fake news. So rely on multiple sources.